So welcome to another video from the Players A Dark Arm. My name's Alexander. And today we're doing a kind of a new series. Um, and this will be, well, a new video type, I think, kind of, <laughs> I guess. But uh, this is a new mini series within that, uh, where we talk just a few kind of strategy tips and pointers for different factions within a given game. Uh, and we're going to do a, a four-episode series about Andy and Abyss that's going to cover government, cartels, AUC, and FARC. Uh, and this isn't going to be a, a how-to-play from a rule standpoint or, or, or a learning experience. Hopefully this is just a short, kind of brief discussion as like an introduction to the faction, the kinds of strategies and things that they're looking for, and, and some kind of tips and tricks from that standpoint. So that you're not going to get like a, watch this and I know now how to play this game. Um, this game's not particularly complicated. Um, There's plenty of other much better videos about that, but just, I don't know, some strategy tips and I will figure out a, a fancy name to call this. <laughs> so uh, let's jump right in. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the government faction. The government faction to me is one of those factions that a lot of people hum and har about, or there may be less inclined to play or less interested, um, because a lot of uh, negative stigma about playing government factions in coin games. Um, they usually seem as being um, challenging, much more so than some of the other factions, um, a bit kind of slow and, and ponderous and things like that. Uh, and, and making, and, and it feels like everyone's ganging up on you, and it definitely can feel that way at times, but I'm here to dispel some of those myths. Uh, but government faction, so this is Andy and Abyss, this is the standard scenario, this is what it looks like when you're playing through four propaganda cards, uh, this is kind of how it's set up. Um, so the first thing that we always, always, always look at, and that we always, always, always focus on with coin games is, how do you win? Um, it is the most important thing to know how you win. And you win by having total support exceeding 60. You start the game at 50, and your total support is um, your level of support multiplied by that support's population location. So, for example, in Bogota, we have an 8 population, and we have active support, so it has a times 2 multiplier on it. This provides us 16 of our 50 support. That is how you win the game. You win the game by going out there and very desperately trying to build support. How do you build support? That's the number one thing that you should be looking at the first thing when you're learning this faction. You build support primarily through the train action, which unlocks the civic action. Uh, civic action is where you pay money, and you start with 40 resources. You can pay one, two, three money, uh, or resources, to bump uh, the level of support by one. So there's five states of support. You either have um, active opposition, or you have passive opposition, or you it is neutral, or it is passive support, or there is active support. So there's five spaces on that pendulum, and you can pay three resources um, to move it one level. Um, if there is a terror marker, because some nasty person's been doing terror actions there, you have to pay three to remove this, then you can pay three to start changing this. So the terror is a, is a blocker, it's bad. You want to avoid those uh, where you can. Um, outside of that, you want to try to set yourself up to be able to do that. So if we look at our train action, again, it's one of the more important proactive things to help us win, you can only do that civic action if you have troops, police, and control. Uh, and, it, and it is a uh, city or a government base. So here we have a base in this department. We could do it there. We can always do it in any of our cities, right? We've got the infrastructure to that. But even if we had troops, police, and control in this area, we can't buy civic action until we have a base. So we're going to go back to train. So when the first train action, we can put a bunch of guys out, and then uh, we can replace those guys with troops. Uh, and so what, what you're looking to do is sweep guys into an area, 
and then do a, a train action there to take some off and replace them with a base, now you can either put police in there, or if you already have police in there, you need troops, police, and control, and it be a base, then you can buy that in. So I think that's one of the things that government gets a bad rap for, is that there's a lot of steps, often, to get going to do what you uh, need to do to win, and often it can feel like you're spending the rest of your time putting out fires. That's partially true, but also, if you're not proactively trying to win, um, you will never, you will, you will, ne you will never win. I know that's kind of paradoxical and very silly, but um, it's true. Um, as the government, if you can kind of get ahead of things, you can set the the pace for the game. You set the tone. You're in control. So. What does that look like? Uh, one of the first things that I like to do when I'm playing Andy and Abyss as the government is you need to maintain what you have. So all of these little cities that have one, air, one guy in them, those are very vulnerable to having guys move in and you losing control. Remember, you need control to buy civic action. So if you lose control of this and, it, and the support gets waned away, you need to move guys in there and do that. So very early on in the game, I'm looking to do uh, a faction op only or a faction op and special activity. Um, I'm, those are the two things that I'm looking for so that I can spend a lot, frankly, an unconscionable amount of my 40 resources. I often spend like 30 of them um, to rally in 10 spaces. And I'm gonna, I've got a ton of troops and police and I'm gonna put out basically all of them. And you're like, that's so much money, I can't do anything else for the rest of the round. Yeah, that's true, but you're also gonna be using events to supplement uh, your actions from that point. And maybe I don't spend all of those, but I I'm looking to spend a lot of money to put a lot of guys on the board so that I can uh, strengthen my position on the board and at least maintain what I have. So on the cards, and I don't have a deck set up because we're just looking at what the kind of things I'm looking for. Um, on a card where I go first, depending on who's going next, I might just do op only because that way I can do everything I need with this big train action and then I'm also hosing my opponent who's gonna not be able to do a lot. So if I'm doing a big train like this, I'm gonna put out guys uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven areas, probably eight, um, because these ones are very vulnerable, so I want to put guys in those, and I'm like, I often want to put more guys in Bogota, because if you lose Bogota, you're in a very bad shape. Don't really need to put guys in Medellin, because you already have a good number of them there, um, and Cali is a special case. You have guys in there that would be plenty, but Cali is the only city that does not start with active support, and it has three population. So if you select this as one of your train spaces, you can immediately spend six resources on top of all of your train stuff. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three sevens is 21. We're going to spend 21 resources, and then I'm going to spend six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm down to 13 resources. What that's going to do is I'm going to put um, up to six guys here, 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 here. And I'll probably put a couple in here as well, just because, I'll, you know, I can. So it fills up all of this. I'm gonna leave these two, because they're slightly less important. Um, your, the other factions have more important things to do than just like stuff a bunch of guys in there, typically. They have their own stuff to do, so very early you can get away with maybe leaving one or two out of there. So I'm going to spend all that money, and then I'm going to do the civic action as part of train right here so that I can buy passive support and active support. Because that immediately puts my victory points at 56. Now I'm much closer to my margin of victory. That puts the pressure on everyone else as well um, to either stop me, which is good because then they're not getting their victory conditions, or to work hard on their own stuff which is also good because, yeah, they're going up, but they're also not hurting me if they're trying to do their own stuff. Um, and so it, it's a way to really set the pace and set the tone. 
Um, that, that's, that's the kind of things that you're looking to open with. If you've got a bunch of guys on the board, you're now much stronger. You're less vulnerable to one little dude walking in because if a guy walks in and I've got active support and I've got, you know, five dudes in there, this guy's gonna flip over. I, I can't, I'm, I can't, he can't do any terror actions on me. He can't ambush me. And he can't even rally this guy underground because he can't rally in spaces with active support. So this guy is useless. And instead of him moving in and being useless, Fark's not even gonna bother. They're not even gonna bother moving a guy in there, typically. And if they do, you don't gotta worry about it because you can just kill him very easily. Because he has to stay there the whole round and like another nine cards until we get a propaganda before he can flip underground naturally. But you'll have gotten rid of him by then and if you haven't, then that's your problem. <laughs> but uh, putting out these guys prevents a lot of other things from happening to you, especially from Fark. Um, who can hurt you very badly. Um, so that's that's why you want to try and sp get everyone out of suit as, as quickly as possible. Because that also, if you have a bunch of guys in all these spaces, it unlocks the power of your sweep ability, where you're going to move guys from adjacent areas into other areas. Because if you have only these guys on the board, when you sweep into this area, for example, I gotta, I gotta bring a couple guys from here and a couple guys from here, great. I can sweep in there, I can uncover a guy, but now all of a sudden, this is very vulnerable to a bunch of guys moving in and me losing control. This is very vulnerable to cartels rallying more guys and removing control as well. And all of a sudden things spiral. So the volume of your troops is a huge boon and a, and a very strong um, aspect to what you uh, can do and what you have in this game. and you need to use that. Get them out as quick as possible. The other thing that, uh, to really consider is capabilities. You, as the government, are the only faction that have capabilities. Um, there is a good side for you, uh, and a good side for you, and there is a bad side for you. So when these come up, um, some of them are very, very strong, especially early in the game. Um, the really, really, really strong ones are things like assault costs one resource, sweep costs one resource. Um, those are invaluable. You triple the value of your resources that you've got so that you can do all of that stuff for the cheap and then spend all your money buying civic action more than you could before or like doing other things like patrolling. So if you can get those, I will pass on a card to pick up assault for one resource per space, sweep for one resource per space. Um, Patrols, free assault in every LOC, very strong. Um, one police may enter each sweep space. Normally you can only sweep with troops, but if I can bring a police in as well, that saves me time of having to rally uh, or to train police in that area when I get a base down as well. That can also be very strong, and a lot of cards play off of, hey, if you've got police there, you can do this extra thing. Um, so that can be very, very strong. Uh, as well. Some of the capabilities are like airlift moves any number of troops instead of three. That can be powerful, but maybe less inclined to take that. But you also want to just like deny those to other people. So when Blackhawks come up, I will very regularly just do like um, up and special, up, up only, because I don't want to be hosed with only moving one troops cube, which effectively eliminates the whole airlift thing. You might as well not have it. I don't want that to happen to me, but I don't care necessarily about that. I'd rather just do some ops uh, on the board. So judging and being able to judge when those come up during the game, like the capabilities get weaker the further into the game it is because you can't use it as much. But then like the ones that save your resources, I will pretty much always do that unless we're on the last propaganda round. Um, but that's kind of a way to look at those. It, take the ones that are really important to you um, saving resources, um, the one that's like mountain battalions where your troops and police can assault as if they were in a city when they're in mountains, unbelievably valuable as well because these mountains are very densely populated compared to a lot of the rest of the board and you can strengthen your um, base of support by eliminating everyone, building bases, putting in police and buying civic actions in these. If you can do that, 
if you count up the points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Guess what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is very strong, and, and it's then all out war against you. Everyone's gonna be trying to, trying to come in and get you, but you have this fortress, and they're gonna all flip when they move into you, and you have to just get them out. Uh, but, but then the ball is in your court in that point. So uh, hopefully that kind of thing was helpful. Um, you wanna defend your uh, LOCs where you can. You take one big patrol action and you kind of move a bunch of police out. Um, these three and two value ones, this is an important junction you wanna keep free so that you can move through it. Um, some of these little one ones are slightly less important. Um, but you only really have to do a big one of those once a game, especially if you've got that capability where you can move out and assault everyone. Um, that really hurts the, the insurgents momentum because they lose a lot of troops that way. Uh, but that's, that helps you to protect your resources. You, the other thing that you wanna do um, that's, that's very, very important is your eradicate. Um, you're the government, you run the war on, on drugs, basically. Um, you're trying to eradicate when, whenever you can that's feasible, especially once the, uh, once the cartels start building multiple bases out in these areas. Um, if you can do an eradicate to remove two bases, you're gonna get four aid, which is gonna give you resources later, later in the game. Um, but if you don't tackle the, dr the war on drugs, the other factions won't do it. The, the reality is, is they won't do it. Um, they should, uh, but they very rarely help. So the onus is on you to remove bases, you gain aid, people like it, you get money for doing that, and keeping the, the cartels below their base victory conditions, that means they're gonna earn less money so they don't get their money victory conditions, uh, and also means they, can't, they just can't quite do as much and they'll be very frustrated. Um, but if you can clear them out of Cali, um, there's, there's much less that they can do to you. And if you can clear them out of the cities, and there's a couple really big cards, it's like, remove all cartels pieces from a couple of cities. Those are very, very, very strong. Because you're gonna get cartel labs in uh, Cali, you're gonna get them in Medellin, and you probably end up getting a couple elsewhere as well. Um, just because they can, they can kind of sneak in there and you can have something of, a, of an equilibrium of a, of a symbiosis with cartels, as long as they're not too high and you're not too high, you're probably gonna leave each other alone. Uh, but as soon as one of the two of you does, it's gonna be all out war, basically. But uh, your eradicate is gonna remove a couple bases. It might add some opposition nearby or within, but that's why you do it out here, because it's gonna add like one gorilla and that's much less painful than you know, giving victory points away kind of here in the center of the map. But uh, the onus is on you to do the war on drugs because in my experience with this, if you do not do it, uh, your AUC and FARC uh, compatriots will not do that. They, they, they just, they don't care as much. And when the time comes that it's like, oh no, the cartels are winning, there's much less that they can do about it. They can kidnap a little bit. They can be assassinate with, uh, can do some bits, but you are much stronger about keeping and just stamping out the, the narcos as much as you possibly can as well. So uh, hopefully that gives some indication to what you're trying to do. Um, once you get yourself kind of established, it's a lot of like sweeping guys to uncover them and then assaulting the, the, you know, the ones that you can to kind of get them out. That way that really frees up an area and your resources there. Uh, and it'll be a, lo a bit longer of a time before things like come back in again. So you don't spin wheels quite as much. But if you can, if you can lock down this mountain area, if you can get some support here, and if you can clear out FARC from here, which easier said than done, this is, this is where you're gonna win the game more often than not. It's much harder to win the game picking up these smaller areas. Uh, your troops are very effective out here in the grasslands. It's easier to clear these off. You're gonna hurt opponents more than you're gonna help yourself m more often than not because the real population, the real strength is in the mountains. But uh, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was interesting. Um, we're gonna do a couple more of these uh, on the other three factions, but that was a look at the government uh, in Andy and Abyss. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander for theplayers8.com.